Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome this morning to our online Eucharist. Thank you so much to everyone who's already commented to say you're here. It really makes such a big difference to us to know we're not alone. Um, we are celebrating Harvest Thanksgiving today. So thank you to everyone who has already given to our basics bank appeal whether through uh, non-perishable food or through uh, giving them some money this year uh, there are collection boxes both at outside the parish office and behind all saints so please feel free to contribute one or other of those uh, ways it was a joy this morning to share in leading worship with our new colleague sarah Reverend Sarah Archer, who I know many of you uh, tuned into the cathedral stream last week to be uh, to, to watch her ordination as deacon. And uh, we had a fantastic service at St. Michael's at eight o'clock this morning uh, in which we were able to welcome her. But we are here this morning to worship God here in uh, from my home to yours. God is with us wherever we are. And so let's join together in singing a great harvest hymn for the fruits of his creation. We emailed out the order of service or it's available on our website. Um, so please feel free to join in with as much as you like or simply to allow the words to speak to you of God's love in creation this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We pray together. Creator God, we confess that we have not honoured and obeyed you. We have broken our relationships with one another, abused your fragile creation, wounded your love and marred your holy image in us. We're sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. Father, forgive us. Lead us from apathy to love, 
Strengthen us as stewards of your precious people and of your glorious creation for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing God's praise in the Gloria. Let's pray. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We listen to God's word as David brings our reading to us. Today's reading is from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Jesus cleanses ten lepers. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. And as we look deeper into it this morning, would you open our hearts and our minds to hear you. Amen. 
so I'm going to begin this morning by telling you a story. There once was a man who lived in a two-storey house. The house was near to a river and unfortunately the river began to flood. As the river rose, warnings were given via the TV, radio, you name it, every method possible. Large jeeps drove through the area to evacuate the people. And as a jeep drove past the man's house, he was told, You're in danger! Your life is at stake! You must evacuate! Get in the jeep! Let us help you evacuate! No, the man replied from his doorstep. I have faith! I'll be okay. The flood won't get me. God will take care of me. The water continued to rise. Soon the man was on the second floor. A boat was going through the area and arrived at the man's house. Notice a boat now. Rescuers made every effort to convince the man to take action so that his life would be saved. You're in danger! Your life is at stake! You will drown in the flood! No worries, says the man. I have faith everything is okay. Even though the flood is rising, I'll be fine. God will take care of me. The flood continued to rise. Then the man went up to the roof to avoid the rising water. A helicopter pilot sees him on top of the roof and hovers over above him. Using a megaphone, the pilot tries to convince the man to grab the rope ladder which was dangling above his head. You are in danger! The flood is still rising! Will you drown? You will drown if you do not grab the rope ladder. Let us help you! No worries, says the man. I'll be fine. Yes, the flood is higher, but I have faith God will take care of me. The flood rises. The man drowns. At the pearly gates, the man says to God, I had faith, but you let me die. To which God replies, I sent you a jeep, a boat and a helicopter. What more could I have done for you? Some of you may well have heard that story before. And I wonder what you might be thinking, why am I retelling it today? What does that have to do with the uh, the healing of the ten lepers? Well, let's see. Let's just recap some of the story to begin with. Jesus was still in the north of Israel, but had set his faith towards Jerusalem. And as he was entering the village, a group of ten men realised he was there and knew that if they could make contact with him, then he could heal them. Word had got out in spite of Jesus' best efforts and people knew he had the power to heal. Now these lepers would have been subject to the laws laid down in Moses' time. They, those laws would have said they had to keep themselves away from society. They had to live clear, clear away. They had to keep distance. Now some of us are experiencing what it is to keep distance from each other, aren't we, today? And it's not nice, and we've only been living it for, what, six, seven months. I've no idea how long this community of lepers were together. They were desperate, weren't they? They recognised him, knew that this was their chance, and they shouted. They shouted out for him to have mercy, to take pity on them. Now we need to be aware, apparently leprosy would have affected their bronchial tubes, leaving them with a raspy, throaty, weak voice. So it would have been a huge effort for them to shout. But it was worth it, because what are they shouting for? They think it's just for physical healing, I say just, but Jesus has other ideas because when he saw them, of course he had pity on them. He knew what they needed better than they themselves. He knew the regulations, too, about leprosy that were found in Leviticus, and therefore he directed them to go to the priest. It was only there that they could be seen to be healed. So they must have just set off to the priest in faith, because actually there's nothing in the story that indicates that Jesus healed them before they got there, when they were just in front of him. And yet by the time it got to the priest, the miracle had happened. They had been cleansed. No more skin lesions. No more raspy voice. No more social exclusion. But now clear skin, the ability to shout and 
the uh, permission to enter fully into community once more. One of them, only one, and a Samaritan at that, realises what had happened and wants to give thanks to Jesus for what he had done. Only one. The passage mentions two lots of loud voice, verse 13 and verse 15, but these two could not be more different. The first was a cry in desperate need by the whole group. The second was a cry in absolute praise and thanksgiving by just one. And this one worshipped Jesus with the whole of his being, throwing himself at Jesus' feet, fully aware of what had been done for him, the implications of it all, the life-changing event that was to absolutely save him. His actions brought about much more than physical healing. The other nine received that, definitely. But his actions meant that there were no longer any social barriers, but also no barrier between him and salvation. For a Samaritan, this would have been a big deal. Considered as a foreigner, even by Jesus here, he is praised for his faith, his recognition for what Jesus had done for him. He's praised in a way that those others who brought up, who were brought up in the true Jewish faith would not or just could not. And Jesus is genuinely puzzled as to where the others had got to. Humanly speaking, I guess, if you've been healed after years of social isolation, you may want to go and find your family, your friends, as soon as possible and show them that you're healed and feel their physical touch and hug or a kiss. And again, some of us know over these recent months what it is like to be isolated from our dear ones, from those who are nearest and dearest. We know that all too well. It is hard. It is really, really hard. But they don't even think to thank Jesus for what he has done. Just common courtesy, isn't it? That's why he's genuinely amazed. He knows what he has done for them. And I'm sure they do too. But they don't seem to see fit to thank him for this miracle. Only a foreigner, only an outcast, does what they all should do. And so he receives full salvation for his soul not just physical healing. Now, this is a familiar miracle story for some, but if you were hearing it for the first time today, I wonder what would surprise you most? What would strike you? What would even shock you? Would it be Jesus' pity for the lepers, fully understanding their role as outcasts and how that might actually match up with how we treat outcasts today, those people who don't fit in with our society the way we like to do things? Or would it be the absolute thankfulness, praise and worship from the one who knew he deserved it? Or would it be the very real rudeness of the nine who could not be bothered to say thank you to the one who'd already done so much for them as a foretaste of what he would later be doing for us all? So what's the message for us today? Well, leprosy in the Bible was often used as a symbol to represent sin. The individuals were ceremonially unclean until such time as they could be healed. And similarly, there is no way that any of us can attain salvation without Jesus' actions. We will never be clean enough to be presented in heaven without the work of the cross. Will we be like the nine or the one? Will we be like the one who is thankful? Salvation was open to all of them. The barriers were broken down by Christ, but only one was thankful. How thankful are we for, Christ, for what Christ has done for us? The Maasai, apparently in Kenya, have a particular way to say thank you. They bow down, putting their heads in the ground, saying something like, my head is in the dirt. For them, thanksgiving is an act of humility. They're a bit like that one who knew how to thank Jesus for what had happened to him. How much like that Samaritan are we? How truly grateful are we to God for all that he has done for us? How much do we fall down at his feet and worship him? 
perhaps not necessarily physically, but in our prayer times or in our lives, are we truly grateful to God in all we do, say, and all that we are? Are we more like the nine, knowing once who Jesus was in our lives, but then just forget to come back to him and worship him and thank him? And this harvest thanksgiving, this time of wonder at creation, what do we need to thank God for rather than taking for granted? Lockdown has showed us, shown us sorry, that the tenuous link that we have, for example, with our food supplies. Do you remember back in April, some of you trying to find flour to make bread? It was very difficult and so were eggs difficult to find. And also, how about the, um, or how about also human activity and the way that it affects creation? Some of you may remember seeing pictures of the uh, canals in Venice and how clear the water was because there was no human activity. How much do we still take God's creation for granted, just as the nine took Jesus and the miracle that happened to them just for granted? Are we going to be like the nine or are we going to be like the one? What action could we take even today to show God how much we are thankful to him for the creation that he has given us? John Wesley told the story of his college porter at Oxford. The porter only had one coat and not much else besides. Food was in short supply and he only had access to water which possibly was a bit of a difficult thing at that time as well, to drink the water that was around. But he would say of God in the midst of near poverty, I thank him that he has given me life and being and a heart to love him and a desire to serve him. The porter thanked God when times were hard, when he had little, when he was probably on the margins of acceptable society. How are you going to react to this miracle? Are you going to be like the nine or are you going to be like the one? Are you going to be like the house owner I introduced you to at the beginning of my sermon, waiting for God to act when he has already done so? Waiting for him to save us from environmental disaster when perhaps he's already given us the keys to know how to save or how to contribute to the salvation of the world? Or are we going to be like the, part, the porter who thanks God for everything with every part of his being? Thanking God for food, for the environment, for the creation in the whole. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, for helping us to remember how important thankfulness is in our spiritual lives. So perhaps with that attitude of thankfulness for all that God has done for us, let us declare our faith in God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Even so, come. Lord Jesus. Amen. David Curtis will lead us in our prayers for others. Let us pray. We celebrate today our Harvest Festival. Traditionally, we would pray for our farmers and growers and thank them for the riches they have produced. This year is no exception. They have been beset by labour problems due to Covid and poor weather during the grain harvest. Thanks to their efforts, we have still been able to enjoy their produce. 
we pray that the current wet weather will not adversely affect the abundance of crops next year. Sorely needed if Brexit affects the import of produce. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who donate regularly to the Basics Bank and have made a special effort for harvest this year. We pray especially for the staff and volunteers who so generously give their time to sort out and distribute the donations to those in desperate need in both Southampton and Eastleigh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for our government, for the many problems requiring decisions, for the effect of Brexit negotiations on our farmers, fishermen and transport, the effect of legislation on commerce, not only by Brexit, but Covid as well. God of hope, in these times of change, unite our nation and guide our leaders with your wisdom. Give us courage to overcome our fears and help us to build a future in which all may prosper and share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Globally, there are many armed conflicts. Let us pray that peace may replace war. And at this time, pray especially for the conflict over the disputed territory between Armenia and Azerbaijan. That it can be resolved without further bloodshed and loss of life. Globally, the coronavirus continues to affect thousands of people contracting the disease or the loss of friends or family. In Burma, we give thanks for the completion of training on gender-based violence and COVID carried out by the Mothers' Union. Pray for all who attended that lives may be transformed. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who, brought, who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick in our parish and give thanks for the recovery of those who have been ill and all who are in need of God's healing, comfort and peace and those who care for them both at home and in hospital. We pray for Kelly Kevin, Baby Lucy, Marina, Tom, Heather, Beryl, Andrew, Patrick, Luke, Mary, Rogelio, John, Vicky, Christopher, Yvonne, Joan and Dennis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the departed, especially those from this parish. Rick Powell, Alison Findlay, and all those who have died recently. All those known personally to us. And for all those 
whose anniversary falls at this time. Comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones, family or friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, David. Now perhaps as we come to share the peace with one another, we can pray for those in our congregations that we're missing, or you might like to comment in the box below with your greeting to everyone else. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, you bring forth bread from the earth. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, you create the fruit of the vine. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children. You embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them, you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, 
and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bind us at the, bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Let's pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in the food of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you do, all that you give us, and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I do apologise for the interruption to the stream. We had a technical issue here that we have never had before. So this is just the technology that keeps on giving. But we are very pleased that we are back and we were able to have that beautiful anthem um, uh, for harvest. I'd like to say a huge thank you to our junior musicians. So we had Nathan playing in our music before the service and you'll be able to hear it again afterwards. And it was lovely to see Cora and Jenna sing um, as part of the choir for that lovely Rutter piece. So thank you and thank you to all the musicians who have contributed to today's worship. I have another thank you to give and that is to a great colleague of mine who this week 
has celebrated 20 years as an LLM, or as it was when he was licensed, as a lay reader, and that's to Malcolm. Malcolm Harper has served here in this parish and actually in, in other churches throughout the deanery, such as his ministry in demand, that uh, over 20 faithful years. So I'd like to thank you, Malcolm, for all that you have offered in God's service in this place. Thank you for your teaching, your praying, your leading in worship and all the many things I know you have done over the years. Um, it's also been a big week for you as I know you have retired from legal practice. So I don't know quite what you're going to do with yourself tomorrow morning when you wake up and don't have to go into the office. But um, it is my uh, heartfelt prayer that you and Rachel will very much enjoy retirement together. Um, we have a new website and if you haven't checked it out then please do we'd love some feedback from you how is it for you is it easy to navigate can you find what you need are there any tweaks that we might be able to make to um, make that better so please do get in touch with the office if you have got any comments about that so we continue with our Harvest Festival theme. Um, there's a service at four o'clock on the St Nicholas Facebook page. And also check out the St Nicholas Facebook page for the progress that's happening in the work at St Nicholas. If you've been uh, past St Nicholas recently, you'll see all the scaffolding that's up. Um, and we're so excited that the drains have already been dug and connected. So it shouldn't be too long before we have flush toilets in that building, which is fantastic. So let's go with God's blessing. May God our creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, bestow on you his care and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Tend the earth, care for God's good creation, and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.